it's nice to see you working on a new deck. Yeah, I figured I'd give Pendulums another shot. Oh, John, Metal Foes. Oh, my gosh. They could use Electrobite too, huh? Actually, I was talking about Pendulum Magicians. Ew, that's meta, though. <laughs> so they're the best deck in the game right now. So if I practice a lot, I'll win more. But everyone knows only douchebags play meta. So because I'm playing meta now, that makes me a douchebag? Well, if the hat fits... You know what? I'm not gonna play this deck, you're right. See now, I talk some sense into you. Yeah, I mean, I might as well just throw it away. Yeah. Wait, what? what? Yeah, just throw out this super powerful deck that I could totally stomp people at locals with. Don't do that. Well, why not? I'm not gonna play it. Like you said, this deck is for douchebags. Well, I mean, you could sell the cards or give them to someone. Duh, oh my gosh, you're totally right. I should give the deck to somebody, but I'm not going to. No! So I'm gonna start this video off by saying I don't care what deck you play. I don't care what cards you put in your deck. I, I don't care what you do with your personal property or with your lives whatsoever. Okay, and there's two reasons behind that, okay? Reason number one is because it's it's none of my business. It's literally no business of mine. What you do, what cards you play, etc. It's, it's none, none of my business, okay? And reason number two is because this is a fun Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. This is, this is all just for fun. And Yu-Gi-Oh! is meant to be played for fun, guys. It really is. No, seriously, Yu-Gi-Oh! is meant to be played for fun. It's why we don't have cash prizes. That's why no matter how much time and money and everything that you spend on a deck, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if you get first place in a tournament, you are only going to get a trophy and a mat and a card if you top a YCS. But like, really, that's that's it. But despite not having cash prize support, we actually have a very competitive meta game. We do. We have a lot of competitive players. We enjoy a very a very high degree of competitiveness for not having cash prizes or anything. We really do. But this is all like duh, no brainer stuff, right? I mean, this is all stuff that you guys probably already know. But I needed to say all that to get to my point. And my point is that there is this huge divide in the Yu-Gi-Oh community between the casual and the competitive. Okay, huge divide. And part of that divide, though, is people misinterpreting the word casual. Because the word casual gets thrown around a lot more and it has been made to encompass a lot more than it really should. And that's where this video is gonna start, guys. I actually watched a recent Farfa video that was very, very good. I'm gonna have his video pinned down in the comment section uh, because it raised a lot of really good points and it, made, it kind of really opened my eyes. I really enjoyed that video and it inspired me to make this one, okay? So let me play a clip from his video so you guys further know exactly what I'm talking about here. The word casual is thrown around as an excuse to play terribly or to play bad decks um, and not even like to play bad decks as in like you know you send you that's fine you want to play you send you that's totally cool but to build it badly you 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 don't just like that that's something that people use in, as an excuse like I'm just gonna put these shit cards in my deck like card trader and jar of greed um, because I'm not a competitive player. What does that mean? You can play sh you can play bad decks and just play good cards. And that's really gonna be the subject of this video, guys. Just because you say you play casually doesn't give you an excuse to play terribly and be at table 500. Yes, this is an actual table 500 tent from Nats last year, but that is a different story. In other words, guys, saying that you play casually or budget doesn't give one an excuse to play terribly, okay? And I tried to think of a lot of different examples of, to use right here to, to kind of further explain my points, but I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So keeping it as simple as possible, it's that old school Sakuretsu versus Mirror Force argument. It really, really is, and here is why. Both of these cards literally have the same activation requirement, okay? I mean, your, your opponent's monster declares an attack, you flip it over and and it activates, right? But the difference here is, is what these two cards do. Sakuretsu Armor destroys just the attacking monster, right? It's a good card. It's a good one-for-one -one card. It's, it's it's just simple. I mean, play it in Goats, play it, you know, it's just a really good classic Yu-Gi-Oh card. You play it in different formats. You guys have played this card before, but you guys all know that Mirror Force is a better card, right? Mirror Force has the same exact activation requirement. Your opponent's monster declares an attack. Literally no difference, okay? But Mirror Force is a better card because it's capable of doing a lot more. It's a better card. We all acknowledge that Mirror Force is a better card than Sakuretsu Armor because they both have the same activation requirement but one of them destroys a lot more than the other. So we have all of that out of the way. We're all on the same page here, right? So if you guys acknowledge that Mirror Force is a better card than Sakuretsu Armor, does saying that you're playing budgets give you an excuse to play 
Sakura Two Armor over Mirror Force, even though you know that it's a better card. No, it doesn't give you an excuse. Because at the end of the day, the object of a duel is to win that duel, to get your opponent's life points to zero. That is the object. And if you are playing cards that you know, that you specifically know, aren't as good as other cards you could be playing, then that makes you just a bad player. That doesn't make you casual or budget, that just makes you bad. And I understand that there are budget players, okay? I understand that there are budget players in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, using Mirror Force again as an example. Mirror Force is a mass destruction card and it's cheaper than, I don't know, another mass destruction card like Evenly Matched, for example, that's very, very expensive. So, like, I do understand the difference between budget and casual, but the thing is, I'm getting you guys to understand the difference between budget and casual, okay? But this analogy of picking an optimal card over over a non-optimal card goes further than just Sakuretsu Armor and Mirror Force. This is just, you know, I used Sakuretsu Armor and Mirror Force as just an example. I mean, obviously, Storming Mirror Force or Drowning Mirror Force in today's metagame would be way, way better than regular Mirror Force because regular Mirror Force, of course, just destroys, whereas, you know, Mirror Force's newer incarnations are just better cards and spin back to the deck or bounce back to hand or, you know, or do just better things. And you guys know that, right? You guys do know that Drowning Mirror Force, for example, is a better card than regular Mirror Force especially against a deck like, let's say, Burning Abyss, where everything in the deck basically floats. I mean, literally, all their monsters have an effect that activate in the graveyard. I mean, all of them do. So once again, guys, let's just say you pick regular Mirror Force over, I don't know, let's just say Quaking Mirror Force, which is a really good side deck card slash main deck card because it sets all of your opponent's monsters permanently until it gives you time to be able to deal with them and it buys you time. Let's just put it that way, okay? And Quaking Mirror Force does come in a common just like Mirror Force. It might be a little more money as a common, but I'm talking like cents, guys, or maybe like a couple of dollars or something at the most. I mean, I don't keep up with every card price all the time off the top of my head here, but I can tell you that Quaking Mirror Force is a common print as well as Mirror Force, okay? So the, the, the point here is that both cards are going to be relatively cheap in comparison, and way cheap in, in comparison anyways to a secret rare. The point here being, once again though, is that just because you say that you're playing casually or budget, doesn't give you an excuse to play cards that make it harder for you to win. I understand playing for fun. I really do. I play for fun, guys. I play casually, okay? But casually is is just how Farfa put it in his video. The word casual, by definition, is a, is a word that simply is referring to time invested. That's all. T that's all casual means. You know what? What is the opposite of competitive? Like not competitive. Like I don't want to win. Like. What is the, the complete opposite on the spectrum of competitive? Someone who doesn't want to win. The word casual is used to describe time, money, and like resources spent on your hobby. That is it, guys. That is literally it. There's elitists which spend a lot of money. There's elitists that spend a lot of money on their decks, hundreds of dollars, sometimes even thousands. It depends on the deck, rarity, etc. Spend a lot of money on their deck, a lot of money on their mats, etc. All of their accessories, right? And then you're, there's your, and they, they spend a lot of time practicing at that and playing all the time, right? Those are your, your hardcore pro elitist players. But then you have your casual players. And everyone seems to think that if you're not super pro that you're casual. And that is not true, guys. That is not true. You can be a casual player and be a good player, okay? I'm a decent player. I'm a casual player. I don't keep up with everything meta 100% all the time, constantly. No, I don't. I'm not going to lie and say that I do, okay? I don't, I don't constant, it's because I don't constantly go to YCSs and regionals. I have a girlfriend I like to spend time with, guys. <laughs> when I'm outside, outside of making videos, I'm spending time with my girlfriend, okay? That is what I I do, right? But there are players, and there are Yu-Gi-Oh players that are, that take this game way more seriously than I do, that seriously have that drive to want to go and play and win all the time. That's completely fine. That's completely fine. Go do your thing. Go go rock, rock on, dude. Go win. But what I'm getting at here is the word casual has been made to encompass a lot more than just casual, than, than just spending less time than your absolute pro players. It's been made to kind of be derogatory almost, and even encompass like players that are really bad, in a lot of cases even purposely bad. I mean, the Sakuretsu versus Mirror Force argument right here, once again. But just like how pro players look down on everybody for not playing meta, it is just as douchey, guys. It is just as douchey for super casual and budget players and just bad players to look at anybody, to look at anybody that wants to play a meta deck and think that they automatically become some sort of douchebag for doing so and wanting to win more 
that makes you a douche as well, okay? That seriously does also make you a douche. It goes both ways, guys. Yu-Gi-Oh! is meant to be just for fun. It's just a fun game. So how do we fix all this? How do we stop all these words from being thrown around to just, just to, you know, describe somebody right off the bat, to label somebody, you know? How do we settle all this, right? How do we settle all of this? Well, we duel, which is obvious, I thought, but either way, um, Let's open some fan mail. And this next one we all should recognize if you guys are familiar with the fan mail Monday. I can't flip this one over because his address is on the other side because he didn't put it over here because he decided to draw stuff on the front of it, which he always does. It's fantastic. Let's go ahead and open this up. Oh my gosh, guys, guys. Oh my gosh. Uh, there's, there's something fell out of it. What is this? Oh my gosh, this is amazing, dude. Foghorn. This guy, oh my gosh, this guy. He sends some of the coolest mail I get. I'm serious. Like, you guys are in for a treat. This guy is amazing. Uh, dear Yugi Dazzling, Dazzling, Foghorn Scorpio here. I miss writing to you. Just what? It's been a minute. It's been a minute. I just wanted to have something uh, new to say to you. This is my fourth ever letter to you and my first since January. How are you uh, this week? I'm pretty good. Uh, see, I knew, uh, knew you were trading with uh, Yugi Ganesh. <laughs> what? What would help you? Can the beans and can the beans and break the circuit? Can the beans break the circuit? Man, why did I think of that? Can the beans and break the circuit? Dang it! Uh, that's such wasted. That's, uh, that's such a good idea. Why did I think of that? Uh, comment up from uh, comment from Gurren would would uh, commend your bravery. Uh, hey, true hate. Hey, Yuki Jesus, congrats on cleaning out the beans. This is amazing. Dude, this is so cool. He like draws these little cartoons of me and stuff. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, dude, I don't even know how long this takes you, but thank you so much. Uh, this time, uh, more uh, misfit cards want to immigrate to the island of misfit binder. Their compulsive urge to chop and kick has to sort their population over uh, their reputation overseas. Please discipline them with your awesomeness. I can't lie, it's been a few months since I uh, bought Yu Gi Oh! sealed product. Even so, between Extreme Force, the Pegasus supports, and reprints of uh, needed hand traps, I can never mull over the next direction I'll take with the, the hobby. I've actually uh, been saving money in order to play a different card game at a Grand Prix coming into my area next month. Well, good luck with that. Uh, quite the balancing act, Toby. Uh, you're the real MVP. Keep producing the content you love. May the millennia millennium items be with you through and through. Fo sincerely, Foghorn Scorpio. Dude, thank you so much for writing and drawing this stuff. I have like a collection. I, I, I keep all this stuff, guys. Seriously. Like, I have like a whole bin where I keep all my mail and stuff and I have like these, just like, I, I guess four of them now. I guess four of them now. Just like these awesome drawings from this guy uh he like it's just amazing dude i don't know seriously i don't know how long it takes you to draw these but thank you so so much for doing it because um i know i enjoy looking at this and i'm sure everyone watching this enjoys like the extra spice in the in the uh you know the letters that, that you do it's it's just fantastic thank you so 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 much you seriously don't have to do that oh my gosh but what who was immigrating to the island of misfit binder hey chop man the desperate outlaw the kick man foghorn scorpio all right dude let's see what we have uh let's see what we have open in the uh, Island of Misfit Binder. I'm not sure uh, where where I am with it. Okay, so I do have another page. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought I had like one more page in here because I filled up the page not too long ago. I finally uh, put in some, I still have stuff to put in here by the way, but I, I need to add more pages to it, but lots of Mystic Clowns and stuff. Oh my gosh, uh, which was a constant reminder to meme the new card into existence, but you know what? I did it. I did it, guys. Cyber Larva. Cyber Larva. This next one's from a girl, guys. Marissa Sach. Oh, my gosh. Once again. Once again, the only Yugi tuber that girls watch right here. It's the devilish good looks. It's the devilish good looks of Yu-Gi-Oh! Jesus. I'm telling you, guys. I'm telling you. What is, what is this? What? Whoa, that's cool. I have never... What is that? I've never seen this before. Whoa, that's Mystical Elf. That is so freaking cool. Whoa. That is awesome. What is... Whoa, okay. So, okay, let's, hold on. So, what's good, Yugi Nono? -No? My name is Marissa so uh, so so uh, I'm probably butchering your last name. I'm so sorry. I'm an, um, I'm an avid Yu-Gi-Oh player from Ohio. I'm also a big fan of your videos. My favorite one is uh, your video about uh, bad traders because it's so relatable. I also uh, love your channel so much because you seem uh, very real. I can tell you enjoy uh, what you do. I uh, I really do. It's other crap that gets in the way. <laughs> you know, um, I would like to have... Uh, 
a, I would ha like to have a successful channel of my own one day. We'll work hard and it, it'll happen, seriously. I'm currently working on a channel called Professor uh, Pudding Princess? Pudding Sess? Oh, that's really cool. Well, I'll be teaching viewers about uh, lore of on some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I think they'd really like that. Um, um, it, it would uh, be cool if you could give me a shout out. I'm going to be at a big uh, tournament in Columbus and if you're going, I would like to meet you. No, I, I rarely get to go to tournaments, sadly, and usually they're at, like in uh, my area. They're in, like in Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, Oklahoma, you know, uh, in the Midwest, you know what I mean? The Southern Midwest, whatever. Um, that's usually like basically like look at Oklahoma and then look at the states around Oklahoma. Or, and you, that's, that's basically where I go. <laughs> so, uh, except for Chicago. Well, you know, Nats was in Chicago last year. We went, we went to Chicago and that was forever. That was 12 hours there, 12 hours back driving. It was terrible. Oh my God. But I would really, really like to meet you too. Um, it's just like if you come down here or maybe, maybe at Nats, cause Nats are going to be in uh, Fort Worth this year. So you'll probably see me there. You'll actually most definitely see me there. You'll have to, I mean, I have to go. It's a, it's a Texas. It's my neck of the woods. Oh my gosh, guys, I, you, you might meet me and I might be a party animal. You don't even know, man. That's going to be exciting. I got, we're going to have like the MetaMats crew coming down and everything guys. Oh my gosh. It's going to be sick. Oh man. Ooh, Texas, uh, man, uh, Texas, guys, just Texas. If I'm not, then I'm sure one day uh, we'll cross paths. Oh, yeah, definitely. I got into uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! from uh, for my boyfriend, uh, Ka uh, Costa, uh, what, who has who has a Yu-Gi-Oh! channel called um, uh, Kira, Kira, uh, Kira Twigs? Kira Twigs. I think that's what it says is Kira Twigs. He told me that it would be really awesome if maybe you and him could do a collab deck profile together. Maybe. Uh, he's the one who made uh, Jerry Bean's Man deck. <laughs> what? Anyway, I know you have a lot of mail to get through, so what's in the blue sleeves is for you, but what's in the white sleeve I would like, si like signed. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, rock on the uh, sixth girl who watches your videos. <laughs> P oh my gosh. Uh, P.S. I'm jealous of your card signed by Pegasus. I'm a Pegasus fangirl. Oh, Good taste, good taste. See, she watches me, she likes Pegasus. She has good taste in men. I mean, she, she dates a Yugi tuber. Good taste in men. Great, great lady right here. Did I forget the return envelope? No, 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 you forgot to send one. That's fine though. Um, I'll use your address from this and I'll and I'll send I'll send the I'll send the cards back. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But keep fairy injection, Lily, dude. That is sweet. That is awesome. That's a secret where very when I have one of these in one of my goat binders. This would be oh my gosh, this, oh thank you so much. That's awesome. A uh, gladiator beast, a uh, torax, a uh, dark magician, the dragon. Dragon Knight, that is really, really sweet. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll sign these and send them back to uh, to uh, that address. Um, but yeah, uh, if you guys, uh, you, I, I, I've said this, you know, a million, million times, but if you guys want cards signed and sent back to you, then stamp and address it, um, an envelope in with your cards that you send so I have something to send them back in. So that, in other words, since you wrote your own address down, um, I, when I sign the cards to send them back to you, since you wrote your own address down, the cards will get back to you. I mean, inevitably. Um, in this case, I'm going to use the, the address that she wrote herself. I'm literally going to peel the tape off this thing and slap it on another envelope and send it back because <laughs> my handwriting, guys, my handwriting is terrible. This is why you, this is why I have you write your own addresses down because my handwriting is so bad that things will get sent back to me and you won't get your stuff back <laughs> but anyways now with that, that um out of the way and over oh these are cool <laughs> the cheerio bamboo shoots um uh, ancient gear golem and medolce pudding cess that is awesome this is some really cool stuff that's a first ed one too from return of the duelist that is really cool. Oh my gosh, yes, I'll definitely uh, sign these for you and get them uh, right back your way. Thank you so much for, for this. Thank you just so much for writing and everything. This is actually amazing. Subscribe!